The Big Red Kitchen Show is brought to you by Markle Auto Group, Salt Restaurant, Wren's Display, The Pampered Chef Products provided by Consultant Heidi Lepold, Sea of Red Wine, D. Ford Family Dental, Corporate Creations, D. Tendenza, Food Styling, and Photography. Welcome to the Big Red Kitchen Show, the show about former Nebraska football players who love to cook. They're big guys, but they're comfortable in the kitchen. We're so glad that you've joined us today. Um, today on our show, we're going to hear an interview with one of those former players. We're going to be talking a little bit about one of their favorite recipes. We're also going to be doing a demonstration of a time-saving kitchen gadget as well as a beverage pairing that'll really enhance today's dish. I'm Sherry Potter. I'm a professional food photographer, food stylist, and I love trying out new recipes in my um, kitchen at home. And today's recipe is by Zach Potter. It's yummy. The ultimate, cult, uh, the ultimate, ultimate comfort food. It's a sweet potato casserole. It is just to die for. I really love it. But before we get started with our show, I would like to introduce you to my amazing and beautiful co-host, Angela. Hi there. I'm Angela Waltman. I am an avid cook. I also love sports, and I've made my career as a writer. So I was very happy when all of these loves were able to come together, and I created the Big Red Recipe Cookbook. Um, the cookbook is available now, and you can find more information at www.bigredrecipes.com. Um, it's a great book. We have over 40 former Husker players that have their recipes in there. Some of them have some really amazing stories that go with them, information about their families, what they're doing now. It's really a great cookbook and a great recipe. But um, before we, we talk about that, I think we should introduce our guest. What do I you think? I can't wait. I can't wait to meet him. Well, perfect. Uh, Zach Potter is our guest today. Zach was a defensive end from 2005 to 2008 for the Huskers before he moved on to um, play for a couple of NFL teams. But I won't tell you any more about Zach. I will let Zach do that himself. Yay. Welcome, Zach. Thank you for having me. It was a you pleasure. Bet. Looking forward to this. It should oh, be a lot of fun. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks so much Thank for coming. You. So, Zach, sweet potato casserole. I know we were talking a little bit before the show, and you were telling me that you weren't even a fan of sweet potatoes before this recipe came along. Exactly. Before my wife and I went to Ruth Chris Steakhouse once, I had never really eaten sweet potatoes, whether it was in a casserole or just sweet potatoes in general. And we went to Ruth Chris, and we heard about this great dish and a lot of people said to put vanilla ice cream on it as dessert. Um, we tried that, I loved it. I told my wife, I go, you have to find this recipe somewhere because A, I couldn't afford Ruth Chris sweet potato casserole forever. <laughs> yeah. But so she went on Pinterest like every other uh, female does in this world these days <laughs> and found the recipe and uh, we've added it to our, uh, our cookbook in our house and we pair it with all sorts of different dishes uh, you know, when we eat dinner. Awesome, it makes a great uh, side dish Sherry, I know it's cooked it a couple times, so it definitely makes a great side dish. What would you suggest that we pair it with? Well, my personal suggestion would be turkey because mm -hmm. it is such a great Thanksgiving dish, but it's also something that you would would be wonderful with a roast chicken on a Sunday afternoon or Monday evening when you're all getting all cozied up for the for the the big uh, fall season. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking chicken and some poultry dishes probably would really meat. be good. I think a white meat. Although I think it'd probably go really well with a, you know some type of a steak too because it it's kind of a meal on its own. It's really delicious. Yeah. Now, Zach, you said your wife cooks it. Has she made you cook it yet? Um, I've, uh, I've helped. I've, <laughs> I've peeled some. I've uh, done the topping a couple of times. Um, when you look at the recipe, there's kind of there's two or three different steps to making it. And so I have helped out with little <laughs> pieces of it. I haven't done the whole okay. thing yet. but Is that um, coming up? Um, you'd have to ask her, but uh, <laughs> my guess would be no. <laughs> well, leave I, it to the experts. I, I like, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I like to have her do all, a lot of the, the main cooking, like that stuff that um, I can't necessarily Really screw up. I'm better on the grill in the summers, yep. like most males probably. So. Yep, well perfect. Well we, before we talk a little bit more about the recipe and actually taste it, which we are going to do tonight, um, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing since you left the Huskers. 
So I, uh, my 2008 was my last year at Nebraska. I went undrafted to uh, the New York Jets, okay. spent uh, about five months there, and then I went to Jacksonville, Florida, played at the Jaguars for four years, had a brief stint in uh, St. Louis with the Rams, and then a brief stint with the Houston Texans before uh, being released uh, August uh, 2014. Okay. And since then, I've been working at CCS Presentation Systems here in Omaha, an audiovisual integrator of all sorts. <laughs> and. Um, been just kind of enjoying life, enjoying having a normal life, if you will. Yes. Um, spending time with my wife. I have a 19 month old daughter, uh, another a son coming up on the way. So just having quality time, and you know, as we look forward to football coming up here, I obviously miss it, but at the same time, I'm looking forward to just being an average fan and sitting mm -hmm. on my couch and playing fantasy football and eating sweet potato casserole. Awesome. <laughs> so a part of four different NFL teams, that's um, unique. So tell me a little bit about the different training tables that you experienced. Were they similar? Were they different? All different. Um, coming from Nebraska, where I believe we had one of the best training tables around, um, which was amazing. And, then I go to, um, I won't, I'm not going to single out teams, but every, <laughs> every, every training table in the NFL is all geared toward how much money the owner wants to spend on uh -huh. the money. And you would think it would be easy that the owner would say, hey, I'm going to spend X just because it's, I mean, food's a huge benefit of your, you know, you, oh, you know yes, I mean, it, yeah. it, it fuels everything that you do. And right. obviously football, especially during training camp and practices and stuff, you use so much energy, you need food. Um, some teams... Um, Skip, skip out a little bit and don't yep. spend as much and the training table is uh, iffy so you end up going out to eat quite a bit more. Some training tables are really good. Um, so it's, it's kind of 50-50, but the best thing about it was it was always free, so that was good. <laughs> free is always good. Well, not always. <laughs> well, do you most do of the time. Do you do all your meals? Usually you it was um, during training camp, which um, in August, you know, everything is breakfast, lunch, and dinner, plus snacks before and after practice. Uh, during the season, it, it's usually breakfast and lunch, um, and then dinner's on your own at home. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Now, Jeremiah was telling us that he, got, he gets at the San Diego Chargers fined for every pound he's overweight. Did you experience that? I never did. My wife put a, uh, a very strict um, um, rule in place that she says if you're ever overweight and you're, because I think it's about 470 or 570 dollars per pound per day yes. that yes. you're yes. overweight yes. and I mean not only did I not want to spend that, I just, it's, it's, ri it's ridiculous to spend that much to be overweight. So yes. I always made sure when I was at my last stint in Houston, um, they wanted me to, me to be 265 pounds and before I'd always played at about 270. So it was five pounds that I had to lose and, and they told me about a month before I had to do that, I go, I got to lose right. five pounds in a month. And I, uh, I got really uh, dietary conscious and yes. watched everything I ate, making sure I wasn't you know, drinking too much liquid here, or eating too much here. And yeah. luckily I was, able to stay under 265 and not get fined. So. You did not eat any sweet potato casserole. No, yeah, no, they, uh, <laughs> that, the sweet potato that. casserole is not allowed I for that. There, if, if sure. you look at the recipe, there's, a, there's just a tad bit of sugar in that. that <laughs> Tiny bit. Just, that didn't might, quite fit in. Yeah, no. not exactly. I think so. you should put me on that diet, Sherry. It might be helpful. Yeah. Well, you'd like it. Well, moving back to your family, you have uh, a daughter, Finley, yep. who does appear in the book. She's adorable. Thank Is you. she at um, the age where she can cook yet? Do you get her involved in the kitchen, or does your wife? My wife tries to a little bit. We've, she has her own, um, I guess, little kids cooking utensils. She has sure. a grocery cart that's, that so she pushes cute. around our living room that wow. will uh, put little pieces across our living room that she'll go with her little grocery cart and push around and she'll go grocery shopping. So that's that's the first part. And I enjoy, I enjoy, I do all the grocery shopping in our house, so which I love going to the store and stuff. So I bring Finley with me quite a bit and my wife loves that time to have just some her time, I guess, and her and I go. Pinterest uh, time. Pinterest, Pinterest time, exactly. Yeah. Find, find some more recipes for me like. to cook, yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what's, to, what's uh, Finley's favorite meal? Finley's favorite meal is uh, hot dogs. Yes. <laughs> hot dogs, applesauce. Um, she, just recently, she's begun feeding herself with spoons and everything mm -hmm. and forks. So that's been that's been kind of fun to Messy. watch. Sometimes she gets more on herself and her diaper than she does actually in her mouth. So yes. we got to watch that. But uh, she definitely loves hot dogs. It's funny of all the foods that she does eat, um, she can say hot dog, which is so funny. So oh. it's, yeah, it's probably cute. It is very cute. Yeah. I, I might be a little biased, but you know, <laughs> well, there's yeah. nothing course, wrong with we that. Always are. We always are. Exactly. Exactly. to be that way forever. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about the sweet potato casserole. Yes. And um, we have a little game we're going to play with you a little bit later. But first, we're going to talk about the lowly sweet potato. Um, these babies are filled with nutrition, as you might know. So we have, I brought a couple in for us. And we always talk about doing a little bit of, of gadgetry. One of the things we want to talk about today is 
peeling these babies because you know if you don't if you don't bake them um, and you boil them you probably want to peel them so we have this lovely gadget it, it is a gadget that we've got from our pampered chef chef um, consultant and she says it's super easy so uh, I'm going to test it out and what do you think look at this that's pretty simple isn't that easy you know I could the, other, do it. the other peelers go like this but I'm, I'm glad you said that because oh. now I'm going to have you do that oh, so okay. be really careful it's super sharp but you don't have to push down you just pull it towards yourself and you can make is there an ambulance standing by <laughs> I have band-aids. I have band-aids. Band-aids, so perfect. Look at that. Look how, Even look a how former football player can peel off sweet potato. <laughs> right. And, and now your I'm sweetie keep going? at home. Yeah, just keep going. Because now your sweetie <laughs> at home is going to know that you know how to do this. Uh-huh. So that when we do this next demonstration, she may have you do it. So most people, when they do a sweet potato casserole or a, anything with sweet potatoes, they go to the grocery store and they purchase the little cans right off the grocery store shelf because it's easy and quick and that's probably all they know. Great job. Thank you very wow. much. Hold <laughs> yeah. applause for later. Round of applause for that. And <laughs> Wait, see how easy show? that yeah, was? Exactly. Super easy and super quick. So, but, but anyway, we have these, these cans of sweet potatoes, but you know, are they the best thing? I learned in culinary school that start with the best ingredients to get the best results. So, I want to make sure we're starting with the best ingredients. So there are ways, like we said, to do bake sweet potatoes. You can bake them in the oven or in your microwave, you know, for you know 35 to 45 minutes. Or you can peel them like this, cut them in small cubes, and put them in some water and boil them off and mash them up. They're super easy to do. Or you can buy the canned version, right? So today I brought for us some sweet potatoes all of those that we just spoke about, and we're going to have you do a blindfolded taste test Ooh, okay. on each of these sweet potatoes. And I, I want our viewers at home to know what they are and for you not to know. For me not so, to know. Angela, I'm going to have you blindfold awesome. Zach. And then we're going to do, I've got a little spoon, and we're going to give you a little uh, spoon. You're going to have to. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. So. This one right Too here. Too tight? No, I'm good, I think. All right. There's that. <laughs> like a bandito. No idea what I'm seeing. <laughs> and there's that. So. I'll just give you these. You just tell me I, what to do. We're, you, all you have to do is open your mouth. Now, we, you got me. <laughs> Angela, Angela, we have got to see his mouth. For this I case. don't blindfold a lot of people, Sherry. That's a good thing. <laughs> she, no cheating, no cheating. I'm not so, cheating. So the goal of this is to let us know which of these you think is the best. Let's <laughs> we redo this? Let's just, let's just let's redo, redo this one real this. quick here. Don't, don't, don't look. Don't cheat. Don't, don't look. look. Don't be, oh, look. Look, he's so good. I love it when our guests cooperate like this. It's helpful, yes. <laughs> and I'll, I'll get one ready here. So the first one, we're going to just That's good. We're okay. gonna have you taste, and you're going to let us know, you know, just kind of in your own mind, think number one, like it, don't like it, so. Okay. Okay, coming towards you, big spoon. All right. Number one? That was number one. Okay. Okay. Now, this is, this is number two sweet potato. I forgot, I should have given you some water to cleanse your palate, but there's number two. Okay, you got a good memory on what that one tastes like? Mm hmm I think so. All right. This one is... Am I supposed to rank these and then? Yes, you're going to tell us which of these is your favorite. Number one, number two, or number three, because they're the, going to be the base for our casserole. We want to make sure we have the best base for our casserole. I'll, uh, I'll go with number two. Number two. The big reveal. The big reveal. You selected... Baked sweet potatoes. Baked sweet potatoes. So good. I'm hoping that our viewers at home could see blindfolded. No, nothing. We didn't coach you at all. You picked the baked one because that really is the best one. What were one and three then? These were right straight out of the can. Was that one? That was that number was... one. Okay, that's the one I le least liked. Yes. Good. And, Good. and number three is the, is the boiled one. So you lose a little bit of the flavor. Two and three were close tonight, but I ended up liking two. Right, right. So the recipe doesn't tell us what sweet potato to use. Mm -hmm. It just says, you know, mash three cups of sweet potatoes. So you can choose from any of those, but I think based on your expert opinion, we're going to go with baked sweet potatoes for us. I think it's a good choice. 
Oh, and okay. they're easy to do. They're easy to do. So I'm so glad you were willing to do that, Angela. I'm so glad I picked the right one. We are going to be practicing with <laughs> bandanas. I, I don't know if we need to. <laughs> <laughs> now, another ingredient that we're going to find in this dish are, are chopped nuts. And you can buy them at the store chopped. That's easy enough to do. But a lot of times over the holidays, it's, it's better to just buy a big bag of chopped nuts it's cheaper, you can go to a Whole Foods or something like that and buy a big bag of, of the chopped nuts. And if you buy them in a the little package, you pay twice for them. But people don't like to get their big knife out to do it. So again, through our Pamper Chef consultant, you can buy little choppers that look like this. You throw them in the, in the top of a lid like this and beat down on it. But you are strong, and I want you to show us how you I could. would just do them in my hand then. Well, you, oh, 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 oh you could. You could. Pop those babies up. Yep. I'd say that's about I perfect. I think that's about perfect. I think it is. Awesome. Perfect. Nice. It works out really nice. So that is another little time saver. You could take a knife and do the very same thing. A lot of people will use a big sharp knife. But, you know, if you have a little kitchen gadget in your house, this is probably the very best probably the very best too. way to do it. Yeah. I think so. even Finley could do that. I think Finley could. Yeah. I, she'd probably have a lot of fun doing that. Probably. Actually, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, back to our little peeler though. One of the things I did want to talk about with this peeler is a lot of times you can substitute a baked squash for that recipe because it is it is a, you know, it's squash and sweet potatoes have a real similar taste. So I brought the, the, ba the squash in so we could show this, because people shy away from these because they're so hard to peel. Yes, but if are. you have a good peeler, you really can, you know, again, just peel it just exactly like a potato. And it works out really, really nice. And that way you could use these nice squash, which again, have just as many healthful benefits as your sweet potato. And again, you throw it in the oven with a uh, a little drizzle of olive oil on it if you just want to eat it without putting it in a recipe. So, I'm really know. glad she peeled that one. That one was Those so more tough. difficult. It, yeah. is a, it is a little <laughs> harder, but did, did you see how nice that, I mean, have you ever peeled one of these? I have, and they are very Oh difficult. my gosh, you very could cut difficult. your arm off yes. trying to, well, I almost cut my arm off just cutting them in half and yep, quartering them. They are difficult. But they are super, super difficult to um, peel. So I just thought, our viewers at home might want to see yeah, that's how a great you could do peeler. that. This is a great peeler, and it does a, a really, really, really good job for us. I like how it um, looks like this, too, as opposed to the more knife-looking ones that you have to... Yeah. It seems safer. I think so. It is. And it you get bigger chunks off of it. And look, I almost just did it right there without even yeah, going to yeah. put it over there. Just put it down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we'll have you put that down. <laughs> well, we promised our viewers that we were going to have a beverage pairing. And I think you have something really exciting. Absolutely. For us I'm so I excited do. about it. Um, actually, our beverage pairing tonight comes from our friends at Salt Restaurant. Um, John over there, I sent him the recipe, told him we'd probably pair this dish with a chicken or a turkey, and said, John, figure out what would pair best with this and he was really excited to suggest the pink elephant which is a, a salt drink it's exclusive to the salt restaurant but we're going to tell you the big secret right now of what is in the pink elephant so you can make it at home to pair with one of the great recipes in big red recipes so basically what is in it is a uh, citron vodka lemoncello cranberry juice soda grand marnier mint leaves and fresh lemon and we have the recipe for you to take a look at. It will also be on our website if you want to look at it later. So take all of those and put them into a martini shaker. And martini shakers are great because you can get everything nice and mixed together and they also chill. So you can put all of your ingredients in there if they're not refrigerated. Put it in there with some ice. Would you like to shake it up for me? Of course. All right. About 10 seconds is what John suggested. So Ooh, give it a good I know there's shake. a right way to do this. <laughs> they do it so pretty when you go to the, yeah, the bar. Yep. That's good. So nice. giving it a good shake like that, take off the top there. And we've got our pink elephant. So we are going to give these a whirl when we taste our sweet potato casserole. I trust John. I think he has a great suggestion here. So I think you guys will like this. Now, when you eat this at home, what do you usually drink with it? Um, nice red wine depending on the night or just a nice big glass of milk I'm I still I still lean back on my skim mm -hmm. milk and it's pretty good so absolutely yeah. if you like this drink and you don't want to drink alcohol it's easy to leave out the alcoholic ingredients and it will still taste great 
So. Yeah. Should we try it? Let's give it a try. And then we'll try it with the food as well. Sometimes food can really change the taste of your drink and vice versa. So let's give it a try. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. Oh, delicious. Mm. That's very good. That is good. I feel like one of my good friends in Dominican Sioux would really like this drink. <laughs> and it would need to have a, uh, a fruity umbrella in it. Ah, uh, I can see him or with a, that. Very or dainty. a bigger glass. You. <laughs> he's he's going to kill me for just saying that, but uh, it's very true. very true. Does he have the pinky out? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. I, love, I love these little these little cocktail glasses. Well, let's let's dig into our little recipe here. Now, does this look like yours normally turn out? I know that yes, it does. I love to cook. Uh, mine never look pretty. They taste good, oh, but nice. they never look pretty. Yes. But Sherry, being a, a food stylist, put that over for you. Thank too. you very much. Her recipes always look as good as they taste. So that's a definitely a skill that I do not have. But I'm glad to hear that your wife seems to have that skill too. Presentation is important. Yeah, Presentation is important, but uh, I'd say taste is probably most important. That's true. And now, and now this recipe was baked with the with with the baked sweet potatoes so okay. i i didn't use the canned so we'll see if you like it all Perfect. right take a take a taste on that what do you guys think mm. it does need milk or mm. whipped topping mm. this recipe with whipped topping is amazing oh, it okay. tastes amazing Jerry, where's your taste <laughs> Well, I'm, I, I'm talking. Ahead. I'm talking. I'm talking <laughs> still. I'm still. I'm still. I'm still. Why don't we try away. it with the with the drink? Okay. Let's see how that. I'm gonna have one more bite. Mm, it's so good. <laughs> it tastes that good. What'd you say? The pink. The pink the elephant. Pinky out. The, oh, pinky oh, out. Pinky. Yes. Let's do that. It, I thought it. It's, a, it's more of a tea thing. <laughs> oh. Okay. Mm. Tea. I just wanted to picture Sue doing it. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I'll make sure I do that next time. Such I like that. that yeah, I good. like that with it. It doesn't overpower it. That could be a um, full meal. Yeah. <laughs> it's sweet with sweet, but I don't think that it's it's too sweet at all. So, John, you did a great job with this pairing. I love these two together. And if you threw some chicken or turkey in there, I It'd think be, it would just it, make it, it all the better. Be better. Sorry, yeah. I'm still eating. You oh, just go ahead. Go ahead. As well. It's, oh, I, that well, I read the bio, and it said that, that you liked... Um, your wife to make a little extra so that you could have it in the fridge. It's, it's very later. good. Um, you can make a big dish like this and you freeze a bunch for mm -hmm. leftovers, yep. pull it out of the, it's true. the freezer. It's true. Uh, yeah. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I know because I, I that's what I did the last time when I made it is I froze half of it mm -hmm. and then I served it the next time I had company over. It was so good. Yeah. It's just the best recipe and I love sweet potatoes so it's, oh. it's, it's excellent. So. so what would be the best way to get this to keep as long as possible? Do you just put it in Tupperware? Do you have a special way to put it in the freezer? What do you guys usually do? Or do you just put it in the fridge because it never lasts no, long we, enough uh, to get it in the freezer? We put it in those little uh, um, foil, I guess, dishes, cover with saran wrap and then some foil and then just mark it and put it in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, I don't know, I'd say we, I, it doesn't stay in there that long because I usually get hungry for it. So yeah. that's the only downside to freezing stuff. That you you usually want that for later, but with something so good, you want to eat it rather quickly. So I couldn't tell you how long I've kept it in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I know when I've done it, um, typically if I know I'm going to use it the next day, I take it out and put it in the refrigerator so it gets to thawing a little bit. And then when I heat it up in the microwave, I'm also real careful to make sure that I put my microwave on a little lower setting mm -hmm. and you might do the same thing just because it has this crust top on it that has a lot of sugar mm -hmm. and you don't want to burn that so or or have it get too mushy so I do try and heat it a little more slowly like on 50% power for just a little bit longer so that's Perfect. how that's how I do mine awesome. well if yeah. you do want the recipe that um, Zach used definitely check out bigredrecipes.com to learn more about the cookbook um, actually you can just get the cookbook and the recipe is right in there. But if you go and take a look at the website, we have a lot of great stories on there. We have a lot of where are they now. So I know we talk about Zach and the story he told us of, of his past and where he's been since leaving the Huskers. And we have a lot of the other guys who've given us that story. We also have a lot of connections to their charities. The book is a fundraising effort. So you can learn why the guys chose the charities that they did to be connected with. And then we also have information on why they chose the recipe. Some of the guys have some really great stories. I know your story was great, and we've got some other great stories on the site. So make sure you check that out, BigRedRecipes.com. Um, but speaking of charities, can you tell us about the charity that you chose? 
for yeah. the book? Yeah, I chose uh, the Ronald McDonald House here in Omaha. Uh, I kind of got associated with it. Uh, my dad used to be there. He worked on the board, so I'd see him you know, doing all the events. I'd put in their golf event numerous times. Um, it just seems like it's a great charity to support. Um, my wife and I try to, um, we're trying to get more active being here in Omaha now. We've kind of been back here full time now, so we're trying to look at different ways to get out and about and you know help out the community. And I felt like uh, the Ronald McDonald House was a, a great starting point for us. Absolutely, it was a great choice. And we have more information about his charity in our cookbook that you can learn more about as well. Very good, very good. Yeah, I, I love the whole Ronald McDonald House, the whole idea. If you've ever had a child in the hospital, you know, I did in years past. And, you know, there's nothing like knowing that you have a place to go. And, you know, people that come from out of town, mm -hmm. you know, four to five hours, just knowing that they have a place to stay, yeah. you and know, close was, to their child. Yeah, and that was the big thing for me. Being, you know, at Nebraska and even at, in the NFL, we'd always go do service um, things around the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, go visit, you know, families or a child in a hospital. And, you know, you always hear their story about whether, you know, whether they're from Omaha or Lincoln or wherever they were. And all you want to do is go, you know, see them. And if they had a place to stay, it's a great spot to do it. Absolutely. Well, definitely a, definitely a good choice. And thank you again for providing this great recipe. I'm very excited to have it in the book. Very excited that, that Sherry made this wonderful recipe for us to taste. I had not actually <laughs> tasted it yet. You hadn't. Oh. I am a huge fan of sweet potatoes, oh, but are? I don't okay. like sweet. I, so I would never have eaten it with a, the caramelized crust like that. I like sweet potatoes just baked. Just Eight. And with nothing else on them but a little bit of sweet, uh, or a little bit of uh, salt and olive oil. So, loved this. I love Great. to try it with the sweet. Great. Very good. Well, that about wraps up our show for today. I'm so glad that you joined us. Um, we are, we would love to hear from you if you have a Husker that you'd like to see on the show, or perhaps you have a kitchen gadget that you'd like to see demonstrated. We'd love to have you reach out to us. You can email us at the show at bigredrecipes.com and we'll get right back with you. Zach, I want to thank you so thank much you for much. being on the show. Glad thank you for being blindfolded. Not everybody you wants know, to be blindfolded. I didn't know what, what I was getting myself into, but it worked out <laughs> yeah. just good. Um, so we're so grateful for all of you for joining us today. And until next time, um, we'll see you again in the Big Red Kitchen on the Big Red Kitchen Show. Guys, let's have a little bit more. All I think right. I can Sounds join good. you now because I'm, I'm not talking. <laughs> the Big Red Kitchen Show was brought to you by Markle Auto Group, Salt Restaurant, Wren's Display, the Pampered Chef products provided by consultant Heidi Lepold, Sea of Red Wine, D Ford Family Dental, Corporate Creations, D Tendenza Food Styling, and Photography. <laughs>